Good morning, everyone. This is Jim Ransom bringing you another episode of Morning Jim, where we read poetry, or we try to. We also try to illuminate types of poetry. Uh, and even more importantly, poets now writing in our state and nation. Although today, that's not going to be entirely the case. Some of them are dead. Today we're going to do a little bit of both. We'll take a look at ekphrastic poetry, which is defined as a poem built around a piece of visual art, particularly a painting, but I think it should also include poems from time to time written about photos, perhaps even sculpture. In any case, I'm going to start off with perhaps the best ekphrastic poem ever written, stressing that this is my opinion, and if you have another option, <laughs> that's okay. Here it is. It's, it's Auden's poem, Musée des Beaux-Arts, which means the Museum of Fine Arts. And it's his commentary on a painting by the great Dutch master, Peter Briegel the Elder, called Landscape with the Fall of Icarus. About suffering they were never wrong, the old masters, how well they understood its human position, how it takes place while someone else is eating or opening a window or just walking dully along, how when the aged are reverently, passionately waiting for the miraculous birth, there always must be children who did not especially want it to happen, um, skating on a pond at the edge of the wood. They never forgot that even the dreadful martyrdom must run its course. In a corner, some untidy spot where the dogs go on with their doggy life, and the torturer's horse scratches its innocent behind on a tree. In Briegel's Icarus, for instance, how everything turns away quite leisurely from the disaster. The plowman may have heard the splash, the forsaken cry, but for him it was not an important failure. The sun shone as it had to on the white legs disappearing into the green water, and the expensive, delicate ship must have seen something amazing. A boy falling out of the sky had somewhere to get to, and sailed calmly on. Now then, the American poet, uh, William Carlos Williams, took this same painting and, come up, and came up with a poem quintessentially in his much different style. And this is it. It's got the same title as the last. Well, not really. It's just called Icarus. According to Bruegel, when Icarus fell, it was spring. A farmer was plowing um, his field. The whole pageantry of the year was awake, tingling with itself, sweating in the sun that melted the wings wax. Unsignificantly off the coast, there was a splash quite unnoticed. This was Icarus drowning. Could there ever be a bigger difference in the nature and ambience of the same observation than that exhibited by these two poets? We could fairly say that Williams has taken a more direct and minimalist view of the thing, of the painting, but then he goes, but then he does give us information not included by Auden, who, in, who expected us to know the Greek legend of Daedalus, the father, and Icarus, his son, who made wings of wax and feathers to enable him to fly, but the son melted the wings of Icarus, who defied his father's advice, and flew too close to the sun, thus coming to a bad end. 
You will have to decide for yourselves which poem you like best. And could it be that Williams, who wrote his poem later, was in a way trying to mock or satirize Auden? Auden's poem was published first in 1939. Williams's poem was written in 1960. You decide what you think about this. Next, I'd like to present another ekphrastic poem, one I wrote after viewing uh, Giuseppe Crespi's Young Man with a Helmet, which is on display at the Nelson Atkins Museum in Kansas City. Uh, and I hope those of you who might be trekking over there sometime this year will look up that painting. It's in the Renaissance collection. I found it extremely informative. It was like as if it were an early photograph referencing the emotions and perhaps the motivations of both the artist and his subject. The picture I have here does not show the distinct blush exhibited by the young man in the in a full view of the real painting seen close up. And it was reproduced so perfectly by the artist. The poem's name is An Unwilling Soldier. At Crespi's Young Man with a Helmet, I did a double take. Here was a very young man with a warrior's helmet and plume looking at me askance, slightly embarrassed by it all, his cheeks blushing, a tight steel collar crowding his neck and collarbone. He had no further armor. His hands were folded over the barely visible hilt of a sword. They were fine hands with long, narrow fingers. Here was a boy who never swung a sword. His soft lips were slightly open, suppressing a laugh. I can hear his father in the background saying, This is Signor Crespi come to paint you. Put on my helmet. Perhaps as you see yourself in it, you will learn to be somebody other than the boy who lives in the farthest corner of the house. They paid Senior Crespi in spite of his honesty. His snapshot rendered with uncompromising skill. So there you have it. <clears throat> the same art transcribed in words, explaining in the poet's way the painter's own interpretations of the subject done in color and light and shade. Don't hesitate to comment on this program at jimransom506 at gmail.com. <laughs> I may or may not respond, but I love to have your comments and any ideas that you may have for poems that you'd like to hear read and commented on. So, so long and Merry Christmas.